Mr. Humbug had counted down the days until Ponyville would receive the dreadful news that their long-awaited concert would be canceled, and he would then cheer in uproarious fashion. He awoke each morning with a smile like a child on hearthswarming Eve, ready to unwrap his gift. A gift perhaps for him, but for the rest of the town, and especially to our young crusaders, his gift would become something more akin to a curse. Apple Bloom, Scootaloo, and Sweetie Belle put their heads together day after day as they desperately tried to come up with anything that could undo what Humbug had done. They had thought to send a letter of their very own to perhaps explain their situation, but they had not a bit to their names. The Pony Post Office wouldn't send a letter out for them for free. No ifs, ands, or buts. They had tried to put it in the back of their minds and focus on the holiday itself without a thought of Mr. Humbuck and their failure. But no matter how hard they tried, they couldn't escape it. It haunted them like a nightmare they could not wake from. Their families were alighted and delighted by the warmth of the holiday spirit. But our crusaders remained cold and restless. They had pondered the idea of confronting Humbuck at his cottage one last time. But they knew not of what they could possibly say or do that would change anything. Besides, not a single one of them had an ounce of courage left in them to even approach his cottage, let alone knock on his door. There was only one thing they could think of that could possibly lift their spirits, or at least give them a warm feeling inside, and that was Pinkie Pie's famous hot cocoa. They walked into Sugar Cube Corner, and they were instantly greeted by Pinkie Pie, who trotted to them with a burst of energy. Is? Well, at least it's almost over. You can say that again. Hmm. I sense a lack of holiday spirit in you girls. No, we're fun, right? Uh huh. Feeling real good. Yep, happy as sugar plums. See? Scootaloo said with a big fake smile as the rest followed suit. With her hoof under her chin, Pinkie Pie analyzed their odd behavior. If you say so. Here, you girls take a seat anywhere you like, and I'll bring out some of my holly jolly cocoa for you. Pinky then hopped over the countertop to retrieve their drinks, and the crusaders slumped in the cushiony seats. So, think when this is all over we'll feel any better? I hope so. I can't take it anymore. Me neither. I wish I could just sleep through the whole day so I wouldn't have to worry about it no more. I'm tired of pretending to be happy at home. Heartswarming ain't ruined yet for every pony else in Ponyville, but mine's already been ruined since that day. I know. This whole week's just been a real bummer. Hey, Apple Bloom, you ever tell Applejack about all this? Pfft, nope. She and Humbug are practically friends now. There's no way she'd believe me. Did you ever tell your aunt? Yep. And what did she say? She said, Oh, Scooty, you've got quite the imagination. How about you, Sweetie Belle? Well, I was going to, but like Apple Bloom said, I think him and Rarity are friends now, too. Wait, you too? Yeah, it was so weird. He came to our house with a bowl of cookies. She invited him in, and they sat and talked for a while like they were on some kind of date or something. Ugh. Ew. Ew. <laughs> what if Humbuck becomes your brother-in-law? Not funny, Scoot. Okay, okay, sorry, but how good were they? How good were what? The cookies, were they good? I didn't trust him. I thought Humbug might have put something in them, but Rarity made me have one. She said it should be courteous to guests or something. They tasted pretty good, but if something happens to me, blame the cookie. What are we talking about? Ah! Oh, oh, sorry. I just overheard the word cookies and I had to know more. Hey, can you girls believe how windy it is out there? It's crazy. Anyway, here's your cocoa. All sweet and steamy. Thanks, Pinkie Pie. Pinkie Pie then pulled away the cups. Not until you tell me what's bothering you. They all moaned and whined, but Pinkie stood firm. If they wanted to taste the glory of her hot cocoa, they'd have to share what was on their minds, and none of them were eager to speak out. They looked to each other as they twiddled their hooves and gritted their teeth. Apple Bloom looked to Scootaloo, as did Sweetie Belle. With all eyes suddenly glued to her, 
The pressure had finally cracked her. Oh, fine, I'll say it. Pinky, there's this guy who just mailed out a whole bunch of mean letters to the Camelot Choir, and once they read them, they're gonna cancel the concert here in Ponyville, and we tried to stop him, but we failed. Now, Heartswarming's ruined, and it's all because of us. <sighs> Can we have our cocoa now? Pinky smirked, and her smirk turned to a smile as her cheeks filled with air. She pressed her hoof against her mouth until it became too much to hold back, and the room <laughs> filled with Pinky's bubbly giggling. Gee, well, that's not the reaction I was expecting. You girls are so silly. So what if the choir doesn't come to Ponyville? It's not going to be the end of our swarming. What do you mean? Once every pony finds out the choir won't be coming to Ponyville, then they'll all lose their holiday spirit. And her swimming will be over. Did I forget to mention the whole it's our fault thing? Come on, girls. Sure the Counterlot Choir has the most angelic voices in all of Equestria. Hearing their voices just gives you that tingly feeling you get when you bite into the spongiest and fluffiest cupcake topped with the most delicious and sweetest vanilla frosting and colored sprinkles. So delicious that you can't help but reach for another one except this one's got chocolate frosting and... Come on! Who doesn't love chocolate frosting? <gasps> Wait, what are we talking about? Oh yeah, and sure, every pony being able to see them all perform live in the, for the first time ever here in Ponyville would be the greatest thing ever, and fill all our hearts with tons of holiday joy. Yep, keep going, just rub it in. But we don't need them to have the best hearts warming ever. We have each other. Pinky hugs and squeezes their crusaders, who begin to feel slightly uplifted. And if you ask me, every pony's voice here in Ponyville is just as beautiful as any pony in that choir. B but... We were told we weren't any good at Carolyn. But did you have fun doing it? Well, yeah. And did it make you happy? Yeah. And did it make you all fuzzy with holiday spirit? Yeah, it sure did. Well then, that's all that matters. Pinky gave each of them their cup of cocoa, and with their spirits lifted, they happily took a big swig of warm, chocolatey goodness. They all set down their cups and wiped their mouths clean. <sighs> Girls, I think I've got an idea. I'm all ears. Whatever it is, I'm in. Then follow me. We've got some work to do. She and her friends leapt from their seats and galloped out of the sweet shop. Thanks, Pinky. No problem, girls. Ah, kids. They just have the wildest imaginations. The day went on as hearth swarming grew ever closer, but our brave crusaders weren't worried one bit. Together, they came up with a plan that couldn't possibly fail. A plan that would save hearth swarming despite all that Mr. Humbuck had accomplished. Secluded in their clubhouse, they worked tirelessly for hours. Once it came time for their curfew, they wrapped it all up with pride. They said their goodbyes, excited for tomorrow unlike they had ever been before. Apple Bloom returned to her farmhouse and was greeted by Applejack, who just so happened to be at the front door. There you are, Apple Bloom. Did you have fun with your friends? I sure did, sis. Well, that's mighty good to hear. Oh, guess who decided to pay a visit today? Hello, Apple Bloom. It's a pleasure to see you again. In walked Mr. Humbuck with that dubious grin of his once again, hoping to see the disdain and resentment that would surely show upon her face. Without hesitation, Apple Bloom met his leg with a great big hug. She looked up to him with a smile on her face and a sparkle in her eye, both of which unsettled Mr. Humbuck to a large degree. Caught off guard, he stood frozen, unsure of how to respond. Howdy, Mr. Humbuck. It's nice to see you, too. Aw, ain't that just sweet. You two have really formed quite a bond, haven't you? Uh, yes, of course. Humbuck led with a chuckle as he patted the top of Apple Bloom's head. You know what they say, hearth swarming is where friendships are woven. Ain't that the truth? Applejack, can Mr. Humbug come with us to the concert, please? Why, that's a mighty fine idea, Apple Bloom. Mr. Humbug was baffled. How could a filly who he knew despised him just yesterday suddenly become so happy and delighted to see him? He couldn't understand why she would inquire about him being invited to a concert. They both know will be canceled. Then it hit him. Perhaps she knew something he didn't, and this act of hers was just to throw off her sister and him at the same time. Maybe she found a way to undo what he had done. 
but she had made a foolish mistake to act so smug by taunting him with that bright, rosy-cheeked smile of hers. Whatever scheme she had cooked up, he had little time to uncover and destroy. Anxious and worried, he had to cut their meeting short. Uh, While I'd love to stay and chat, I fear I have a most pressing matter to attend to, and it simply cannot wait. Oh, but you are going to join us for the concert tomorrow, ain't you? Do not fret, dear child. There isn't any pony else I'd rather join for such an event. You can certainly expect me. Well, that's wonderful to hear. Hopefully all this confounded wind calmed down by then. We should all get some rest now. We've got a big day ahead of us. Probably the biggest hearts warming eve we've had in a long time. Uh, yes, quite. Uh, now then, I shall see you all tomorrow. Good night, Mr. Humbug. Uh, to you as well. Humbug bid them farewell as he shuffled through the snow. Humbug gritted his teeth, and he lowered his voice to a low grumble. Enjoy it while you can, because if you think you have the upper hoof, you are sadly mistaken. Humbug, bent on putting an end to Apple Bloom's plot, raced as fast as he could to the pony post office. He was attacked ruthlessly by the raging winds. He tried to use the collar of his coat to help shield his face from the intense gale, but his body still shivered from the icy chills. Without a care, he pushed and shoved any pony that stood in his path. The cold had become nearly unbearable, but Humbug pressed onward. He needed to be certain there wasn't any sort of delay or issue with the delivery of his letters. He reached the post office and pushed his doors to enter, but they wouldn't budge. What in the name of- Humbug then noticed a sign hung up in the window. Closed early for the holiday, happy heartswarming eve. No, this cannot be. Humbug pushed and kicked at the door in a fit of rage. He peeked through the glass to see if any pony was inside. Hello? Is any pony in there? The office was empty, and all the lights were out. Oh, Celestia. Humbug kicked the door once more, then grumbled as he stomped his way back home. The door to his cottage was thrust open, and he stepped inside with a soulless look about him. He ripped off his coat and tossed it onto the floor. He took off his hat and threw it into a random corner of his home. He loosened his bow tie as he felt it difficult to catch his breath. With a box of matches, he feverishly struck a match intent on producing a flame, but its stubbornness infuriated him. He tossed it over his shoulder, and with one swift strike, the next match gave him a flame, which he used to light a candle at his desk. He yanked his chair out as it screeched across his wooden floor, then sat down as his head pounded furiously. What is that filly's plan? What does she know that I don't? Humbug swiped a stack of books off his desk and listened as they smacked the floor to hopefully grant him some sort of pleasure, but he instead found himself exhausted. On the verge of a breakdown, he laid his head down on the desk and hoped that his fears were nothing more than possibilities. No, there's nothing she could have done. Humbug raised his head and felt his confidence coming back to him. Housewarming is tomorrow. That's not nearly enough time for her to try and send out a letter to the choir, even if she had the bits to pay for expedited postage. But surely she's smarter than that. It must be something else. She must have told some pony she trusts about me, but who? Mm, Quite clearly wasn't her sister. Who else would she tell? The the authorities? Bah! They'd never believe a story as ludicrous as hers. Humbug jumped out of his chair and shouted to his walls with passion. My plan is flawless, I just know it. And when I join them in the crowd, I want to be the first to see the change in her tune when she hears that their precious concert is indeed cancelled. But let's pretend uh, she somehow did manage to foil my plan. Uh, and then so be it. There'll be many more heart swarmings after this, and I won't stop here. Next time, I'll concoct a plan so meticulous that it can't possibly fail. Then, whilst every pony weeps and moans, I'll be the only one laughing. It'll be the end of their beloved holiday, here and forever after. A stiff breeze blew out the flame from the candle and his cottage was instantly flooded with darkness. Confused, Humbug grabbed his box of matches and struck another match. It lit up, but another breeze blew it right out. Humbug stopped and listened, but could not hear any wind inside his cottage. 
He tried once more to light a match, but the wind blew it out yet again. Frustrated, he threw the box of matches onto the floor and began to search vehemently for the source of the wind. It was difficult to manage, but the moonlight that shone through his windows was enough to guide him through his living room. He checked the windows and discovered one had been left open. He did not remember ever opening it, but did not think about it for too long, as the cold had become unbearable. He closed and locked his window, and a childlike giggle erupted from behind him. A jolt was sent through his body, and his heart leapt from inside his chest. He whipped around and nervously scanned the room. Then he spotted something. It was difficult to see, but he could just barely make out the faint silhouette of a filly standing in the darkest corner of the room. Who goes there? <laughs> With giddy laughter, the filly galloped away in a burst of speed. Petrified, Humbug watched the figure climb upstairs to his bedroom. Apple Bloom, if that's you, you'd better stop this immediately. Humbug waited for a response, but all was silent upstairs. Self-assured of the figure's identity, Humbug walked over and stood at the bottom of the stairway, where he had a clear view of his bedroom. The door was left halfway open, but nothing could be seen inside other than pure blackness. So this was your plan, hmm? To scare me? Ha! What good will that do you? Without warning, his bedroom door violently slammed shut. Humbug trembled, and the childlike giggling continued from behind his bedroom door. It was hard to distinguish, but to Humbug, it sounded eerily like Applebloom's voice. Humbug cautiously proceeded up the stairway, curious but fearful. He wanted to catch Applebloom in the act and expose her behavior to her sister. That way, she forever regret this twisted game of hers. Despite how sure he was that Applebloom was the one hiding behind that door, something still fell off to him. With every step he took, the air grew colder. So cold that he had begun to see his breath. I'll give you one chance, Apple Bloom. Come out, and I won't tell your sister about any of this. Humbug had tried to be reasonable, but the monotonous giggling had finally driven Humbug up a wall. With haste, he marched up the stairway and glared at the door. He could hear wind blowing from behind it, which explained how cold the air had become and how she broke into his home. Angered, he banged on the door. Apple Bloom, you'd better come out and explain yourself. The giggling continued, and Humbug's patience had finally worn thin. You want to make this difficult? Very well. If you don't come out before I count to three, I'm barging in there myself. One, two... <gasps> there was a gasp, and the door opened ever so slightly. Empowered, Humbug grinned as he finally felt he had control over the situation. He pushed open the door, and his grin vanished. He was perplexed to find the room completely empty. Impossible. He tried desperately to come up with a sensible explanation, but he couldn't with the unbearably cold air blowing against him. He shut the window, and the room fell silent. Bah, humbug. A faint whisper called to him, and every inch of his body tensed. Bah, humbug. The voice grew louder and became more distinguishable. It was a voice Humbug hadn't heard in years, a voice he never expected he'd hear again. He looked over his shoulder, and from the darkest corner of the room, a stallion emerged. He was an older gentle colt dressed in formal attire, and the look in his eyes pierced Humbug's cold, hard exterior. He tried to convince himself that his eyes were merely playing tricks on him. No, it can't be! Bah humbug, bah humbug, bah humbug. But as the stallion stormed forward, his presence suddenly became undeniably real. Humbug fearfully backed himself against the wall and helplessly fell to his hooves. His heart raced and his body trembled as he braced himself for whatever the stallion might do. But instead, he simply looked to Humbug with disapproval. After all this time, you've still learned nothing. Just look at you, on the verge of tears. A pathetic display. No, you're not real. This heartwarming concert is supposed to be perfect. And if you're going to give a performance like that, then it's just not going to be perfect. Now is it? You're not real! 
Do not speak whilst I'm speaking. You may speak once I'm finished. Is that clear? Is that clear? Y yes, sir. I'm sorry, sir. You've been nothing but a waste of my time, Humbuck. Never have I had a student fail so harshly as you have. I can only assume you do not wish to learn. But... but I do! Then why don't you? Uh, your parents were the ones who signed you up, weren't they? Frankly, if I were them, I'd be embarrassed. To think you ever had a sliver of vocal talent in you, and to find out you had none would make me feel... foolish. This will be my last lesson for you. Mr. Please! My last lesson is this. Don't waste your time pursuing a dream you have no business chasing. Whatever aspirations you have in regards to singing and music, forget them. Let them go. Put your time into something more productive. Something you can actually do. And trust me, you'll thank yourself for it. Am I clear? Yes, sir. You're angry. Good. The only pony to blame for your failure is you. And that's the harsh truth of it all. The sooner you accept that, the easier this will become. Now, go home. Take a good long look at yourself and repeat after me. Bah humbuck. Bah humbuck? That's good. Say it loud. Say it clear. Say it with purpose. And express your anger. Maybe then you'll amount to something. But not here in my choir. Now, get out of my sight. Bah, humbug. Bah, so, humbug. Bah, are you okay? Humbug. Bah, What's humbug. the matter? Sweetie, humbug. you can talk to us. Bah. What happened to choir? <laughs> Humbuck's eyes darted wildly across the room, and he found himself in the safety of the warm glow of sunlight. He sat up in his chair and realized he had fallen asleep at his desk. The candle he had lit had nearly completely melted away as the hardened wax draped over the brim of the candle holder. The pace of his heart settled, and his tense muscles finally relaxed. Mr. Humbuck, are you home? Uh, uh, uh yes, yes, quite. G give me just one moment. <sighs> he breathed in. He breathed out. But he felt as though nothing could take his mind off of what he had just experienced. He had to get his mind straight. If Applejack or Apple Bloom were to find him acting strangely, it could make him look suspicious if everything has gone according to his plan. Humbug stood up, fixed his tie, and headed for the door. Outside, he met Applejack, who stood at his porch, but she was not alone. Apple Bloom, too, stood beside her, both of them bundled up to protect themselves from the rugged winds and intense cold. Applejack, uh, Apple Bloom, uh, this is indeed a surprise. Uh, good morning to you both. Yup. Happy Hearts Warm and Eve, Mr. Humbuck. Mmm, uh, y yes, indeed. Gosh, are you feeling well? You're looking kinda pale, like you've seen a ghost or something. Uh, oh, uh, I assure you I'm right at rain. A bit early in the morning to pay a visit, no? Sorry, Mr. Humbuck, but Mayor Mayor's calling for a meeting over in Town Square. We think it's about that time. Ah, you think so? Uh, well, uh, allow me to get my coat and we'll be on our way. Hmm. I had hoped these unforgiving winds would have settled by now. I don't quite get it either. Ponyville's never had crazy weather like this. And apparently the Pegasi up in Cloudsdale have no clue about what's going on either. Hmm, that is strange. But I'm sure there's a logical explanation for all this. I sure hope so. Humbug went back to grab his coat and hat then headed out with Applejack and Applebloom headstrong into the blizzard. The winds pushed against them, but they held on to their hats as they proceeded onward. Applebloom walked beside Humbuck and tugged at his sleeve. Mr. Humbuck? Yes, child. What is it? I'm really glad you're coming with us. I know you don't care much for Carolyn, but maybe this time it'll be different. 
Humbuck bit the inside of his cheek as Applebloom's cheery demeanor droned in his ears. But he knew he had to keep his composure, so he played along. Well, perhaps you're right. I have a feeling this most certainly will be a different experience for me. The ponies had formed a large crowd in the center of town, where the mayor stood at her podium urging every pony to gather around, as she had an important announcement for them all. Every pony talked and murmured amongst themselves about what the mayor had to say. And of course, the thought on all their minds was in relation to the Canterlot Choir. Humbuck, Applejack, and Applebloom wormed their way through the crowd until they reached the front. Every pony's faces were lit up with excitement, even Humbuck's, but not for the same reason as all the rest. Despite all the energy flowing from the crowd, the mayor's face evoked a different kind of energy. Every pony, please, quiet down. Now, all of you have been eagerly awaiting this day, myself included. This hot swarming, we are to be visited by Equestria's well-renowned Canterlot Choir. The crowd erupted with cheer and stomped their hooves excitedly in the snow. The mayor raised her hoof and the crowd's enthusiasm calmed. At least, that was the plan. The ponies in the crowd looked to each other in confusion and Humbuck's face immediately lit up. Last night, so I had reached out to the Canterlot Choir, asking if there were any other arrangements that needed to be made in preparation for their arrival, and they said that they will not be making their appearance in Ponyville today. Is it because of the weather? Are they rescheduling? Their reasoning was a bit perplexing. In fact, I will read aloud exactly what the message stated. The mayor unfolded a letter and cleared her throat. Uh, mm, mayor Mayor. We thank you for wanting to give us the opportunity to perform for your town, but it is clear that we are not wanted. We would have written you earlier, but we assumed you were already aware of how negatively the announcement of our arrival was received. We apologize for informing you on such short notice. Take care, and we wish you, along with every pony in Ponyville, a very happy hearts warming. Humbug looked all around him and expected an outrage from within the crowd. Instead, he saw a mix of confusion and sadness. He could tell every pony's heart was broken by the news, and it brought him great joy to witness. I'm sorry, every pony. I... I don't understand it myself. Dear, oh dear. Definitely a tragedy, wouldn't you say? It... it just don't make any sense. How could this have happened? Well, perhaps it's a sign. Uh, maybe it's for the best. Uh, Apple Bloom, how are you feeling, Sugar Cube? Applejack and Humbuck then found that Apple Bloom was nowhere to be seen. Poor thing. Probably couldn't bear to hear it anymore. I don't blame her. I'd act the same. Can you two believe this? This is just the worst possible thing. Who could have been responsible for this? I don't know. But I need to go find Apple Bloom. She's going to need all the comfort she can get at this point. Uh, she couldn't have gotten too far. Uh, I'll go find her, just wait here. Thank you, Humbuck. With a nod, Humbuck maneuvered through the crowd, only to hide behind the nearest cottage. He peered around the corner and relished the grand view of every pony else's despair. He watched them all as they hung their heads in sorrow and comforted their loved ones. The children wept and the parents held them. Many were stunned and in shock from what they had heard. It felt like a bad dream that none of them could wake from. But for Humbuck, it was a dream come true. Within moments, they began to turn on one another in a search for some pony to blame. Who reacted negatively to the announcement? It sure wasn't me. Was it you? No, oh, I hope you're not asking me. Well, maybe I am. Oh yeah, well I think this was all your fault. No, it had to have been you. On and on they went. Hooves were pointed and accusations were made. Chaos ensued amongst the crowd as Mayor Mayor did her best to put them at ease, whilst Humbuck laughed from behind the cottage. <laughs> Just look at them. All this petty arguing over a concert and a good-for-nothing choir. Like children when they don't get what they want, even when they don't know what's best for them. I did this town a favor. Maybe now things will be a little bit different around here, and it's all thanks to me. 
You're welcome, Ponyville. Enjoy your pathetic holiday. Humbug smiled as the crowd's arguing worsened, but beneath it all, he heard something that was quite the opposite. Like a ray of light that pierced through a shroud of darkness, a sweet sound made itself heard amongst the chaos. It was a song, a familiar one at that. One that Humbug knew he had heard not too long ago, but he could not pinpoint exactly where it came from. It was a sound so sweet that it felt like a fly buzzing about in his ear, and he wanted it to end. He looked over his shoulder and was perplexed by what he saw. There they were, Apple Bloom, Sweetie Belle, and Scootaloo, with sheets of lyrics in their hooves as their voices delicately filled the air. What the n- Just what exactly are you three doing? I demand you stop this incessant singing at once! Humbug's command flew right over their heads as they continued to sing their song with passion. Humbug fumed and stomped toward them with a fuming passion of his own. Fine, if you won't stop on your own, I'll make you stop. What will you do now? Well, it's a mighty good thing we took your advice, Mr. Humbug. What do you mean? We studied the lyrics from start to finish. What? No! Ready, girls? From the top! And a one, and a two, and a... They began to sing once again, and Humbug pressed his hooves against his ears to block them out. But it wasn't enough. He strained and suffered until he couldn't bear it any longer. Off! You are all off! Ugh, what will it take to make you all stop? Oh, we're not gonna stop. But if you really don't like our singing, then there's one thing you can do. And what exactly would that be? Teach, Teach us. us! Teach you? I'm no teacher. Besides, what good would a teacher do you three anyway? A teacher would just dismiss you all for your lack of talent. Maybe you're right. Of course I'm right. It sounds like you'd have to be a pretty bad teacher to just give up on students like that. A real crummy one, too. I mean, who cares about what some dusty old teacher says? As long as you're having fun doing what you're doing, then isn't that all that matters? Well, I... I'd never considered that. Didn't you used to have fun singing before some pony else ruined it for you? Humbug suddenly found his throat had grown sore and it became difficult to speak. No matter how much he fought it back, he was overwhelmed by an emotion he hadn't felt in a long time. Oh, yes, I did. Very much so. Then maybe you can be a better teacher than yours ever was. A better teacher? Humbug thought to himself, and the idea intrigued him. Seeing these three fillies who sincerely wanted to learn from him, to give him an opportunity to be something that he never had as a young colt, filled him with a warmth that spread from his chest to his cheeks. However, something inside him held him back. I... I don't know if I can. It's been so long since I've sung. Come on, you can do it! Just sing along with us! We can learn together! Besides... We're all friends here. No pony's gonna judge you. No why, no how. Friends? But how? I... I thought... I guess it's just like you said. Hearts warming really is where friendships are woven. Humbug then realized in that moment that everything she told him the other day was meant not as some clever scheme, but something much more sincere. He spent the entire night trying to see through a charade that never was. And if it weren't for his stubborn nature, Perhaps he could have seen it. The fillies he once saw as his enemies now stood before him as friends. In a matter of minutes, they've shown him just exactly what the spirit of hearth swarming can do. For the first time in years, Mr. Humbuck felt a joy unlike any other. Well then, from the top, shall we? Yeah! And a one, and a two, and a... At once, all four of them began to sing. Humbuck's voice first came out rather timidly, but as the words and melody began to flow, he found the confidence he thought he had lost long ago. Together, they were a quartet whose song journeyed effortlessly through the streets of Ponyville. The four of them felt something course through their bodies, an almost magical feeling. One so wondrous that the louder they sang, the stronger it became. Unbeknownst to them, another voice joined in, they all turned to see Applejack, who lent her voice to their song. Beside her was Rarity, and she too couldn't resist the urge to join in. 
Then came Pinkie Pie, who joined in with an explosion of holiday spirit and glee. Their voices erupted into a splendorous harmony, which caught the attention of just about every last pony who was gathered over in Town Square. Their petty arguing hushed, and they approached the singers whose song had captivated them instantaneously. All of Ponyville sang along and rejoiced in the hearthwarming magic as they sang and swayed to the tune. Of course, not every voice was flawless, but Humbug had not a single care in the world. A voice's perfection no longer mattered to him, for without passion, there is no point. As their song went on, the storm began to settle. Humbug was mystified by the sudden shift in the weather, but was also enchanted by the clusters of snow that fell gently to the ground. He took a good long look at the ponies around him through new eyes, and the world never looked so clear. Their song came to a soothing end, and every pony in the crowd roared and cheered as they stomped their hooves. Humbug, overwhelmed with enlightenment, knelt before the crusaders and softly spoke. Apple Bloom, Sweetie Belle, and Scootaloo, I cannot thank you enough for what you've done for me today. This has to be the greatest hearthswarming I will remember for years to come. Really? Indeed. But now, there's one last thing I must do. Humbug stood and turned to the crowd. Ponyville, if I may have your attention, please. The crowd's celebration came to a halt, and they eagerly awaited what Mr. Humbug had to say. Many of you know me as Humbug, or Mr. Humbug. For those of you who care to be a bit more formal, but you probably know me best as the hearth-swarming grouch. The crowd stayed silent as they glanced to one another, uncertain of how to react. Don't be afraid to agree. I'm fully aware of it myself. Year after year, I've been a bitter old stallion during this wonderful time of year. I've mocked and shamed many of you simply for doing what you're passionate about. And what right do I have to take that away from you? The answer is I don't, and I never did. So may this hearth swarming mark the first day of a brand new humbuck. I intend on righting the wrongs I've made. If it weren't for these three courageous and audacious fillies, I may never have changed my ways. The crusader's eyes lit up as they rushed to stand at Humbuck's side. Apple Bloom, Sweetie Belle, and Scootaloo have always gone on about being heroes and saving hearthswarming. Well, I think I can safely say they've succeeded in doing so. Now, Ponyville, I ask that you all give these three heroes a warm round of applause. And so, the crowd stomped and cheered as loudly as they could. Together, the crusaders hugged and jumped as their hearts overflowed with joy. Applejack and Rarity rushed to their sisters and embraced them as tightly as any proud sister would. Pinkie Pie, not wanting to be left out of the love being shared, jumped in to wrap them all in one big group hug. Humbug's heart was touched by the scene, and without any semblance of a doubt, he knew that these three fillies deserved every ounce of recognition they received. But that isn't all. In relation to righting the wrongs I've made, I'd like to start with perhaps the biggest one of all. No. The Cantalot Choir didn't cancel their appearance due to the weather or by any of you. It was me. The crowd mumbled and muttered, confused by Humbuck. The negative reception they spoke of in their letter was all because of me. I wrote nearly a hundred letters expressing my hatred and distaste for them, and signed them all with your names. <gasps> Granted, I don't know all your names, so I conjured up as many as I could to ensure that the choir would never show their faces here in Ponyville. These three did everything in their power to try and stop me, uh, but I would have gotten away with it. And after what's happened today, I'd never be able to live with myself without speaking the truth. If I could somehow go back and do things differently, I'd take that opportunity in a heartbeat. Applejack and Rarity listened, stunned by what they heard. The Crusaders were proud of Humbuck's decision to come clean, but their pride quickly changed to fear for Humbuck. I don't expect any of you to forgive me. Not at all. In fact, I certainly don't forgive myself. Mayor Mayor stepped out from the crowd and approached Humbug with a stern look about her. 
Is what you've said true? Yes. No! He was just, uh, joking. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> yeah! Ain't that right, Mr. Humbug? Just your typical heart swarming prank? Humbug smiled. Thank you, ladies, but... It seems you've made a few new friends, Mr. Humbug. Indeed I have. Well, I'm happy to hear. Mayor Mayor then turned to the crowd. Ponyville, I need all of you to assist me in making a decision. Mr. Humbuck has admitted to his wrongdoing and has made a clear, sincere apology to us all. So, what say you? Won't any pony step forward to accept it? The crowd mumbled and muttered to one another as they deliberated. The more time that passed, the more anxious the crusaders became. That's not to say Mr. Humbuck wasn't at all anxious, but the fact that no pony had spoken up didn't surprise him. Why, it was just as he expected. He didn't put any blame on the citizens of Ponyville. Instead, he put it all on himself. Mayor Mayor turned back to Humbuck, who removed his hat and lowered his head. The crusaders shut their eyes and held on to one another as tightly as they could and braced themselves for the next words to leave Mayor Mayor's mouth. Well... Then I suppose... Wait! Humbug raised his head as every pony else's attention was grabbed by a mare who stepped out from the crowd. She was the store owner that crafted musical instruments, who he berated viciously for her failing business, and Humbug recognized her instantly. It brought him bitter memories that sickened his stomach. If no pony else will come forward, then I will. Mr. Humbug, I forgive you. Not just for the concert, but for everything else. What? But but how? The way I treated you, I was... Listen, every pony deserves a second chance. Even the grouchiest of ponies. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you very much, miss. I'm gonna step up, too. A stallion stepped forward, who Humbuck recognized as the shopkeeper that offered him the free record, which he smashed to pieces. Oh, after that speech you gave, it hit me right here. The stallion tapped his chest. I forgive you, pal. Really? Even after I... Eh, we all have our bad days. I just thought you were having one of those. Plus, I agree with what she said. Every pony should get another shot at doing things differently. Why, th that's very kind of you, sir. Many more ponies came forward, from the carolers Humbug mocked days ago to Towns ponies he had never even met, as every single pony from the crowd joined in and made their forgiveness known as they shouted it for all to hear. Both Applejack and Rarity approached him and placed their hooves on each of his shoulders. They only needed to look at him with a simple smile for him to know that they too had forgiven him. He then felt something had grabbed onto his legs and found the three fillies clutched onto them. He listened to every voice in town express their absolution, and it brought tears to his eyes. The warmth from the tight embrace of all his new friends made his heart flutter as he surrendered to what he now knew as the true magic of hearth warming. Well, I say just about every pony here except your apology, Mr. Humbug, myself included. However, there is just one thing I'd like to discuss. Don't you fear the Cantalot Choir deserves to know the truth as well? As a matter of fact, Miss Mayor, I already have a plan for that. Oh, is that right? Indeed. Tonight, I intend on writing them a very detailed apology letter explaining everything, and I shall send it out as soon as possible. That sounds like a wonderful idea. Now then... Mayor Mayor raised her voice to the entire town. This horse swarming was supposed to be the grandest we've ever had. And in a sense, that is still true. I have never felt such strong holiday spirit until today. Especially from our most, as he put it, grouchiest resident. <laughs> in fact... I'd say what has happened today is far more important than the presence of a choir. Friendships were made, and a lesson or two was learned along the way. That is what heartwarming is all about. So, let us all wish Mr. Humbug, along with our little holiday heroes, a very happy heartwarming. At once, the town erupted with joyous cheer, 
the loudest they've ever been. They stomped, whistled, and clamored for all four of them, which only made our brave crusaders clutch onto Humbug's legs even tighter. Happy hearts for me, Mr. Humbug. Deed it is, Apple Bloom. Deed it is. And so, their night went on as they celebrated their greatest hearthwarming ever. Funny how Humbug's evil scheme ended up not destroying the holiday as he had hoped, but instead made every pony's hearthwarming just a little bit better. Every pony slept happily that night. Yes, especially Mr. Humbuck. He had written such a long letter to the Canterlot Choir that the scroll reached all the way down to the floor. I guess he had so much to say, he felt the need to write down everything that came to mind. He must have also thought it through for hours, since he fell asleep right at his desk. The next morning, Mr. Humbuck awoke as a changed stallion. He rushed to the pony post office with his scroll, but also made a few stops along the way. His first stop was the second hoof shop, where the stallion was delighted to see Humbuck again. Oh, good morning, Mr. Humbuck. Ah, to you too. Uh, say, do you still have that record player? Sure do. Surprised no pony's taking it off my hooves by now. Well, I'd like to take it off your hooves. Uh, along with that, as many records uh, you can fit in a bag. I'm not worried about the price, just as long as the music is heavenly. Wait, really? Of course. Like you said, it'll most definitely make a great addition to my household. The music hasn't been played in my home for years, and I think it's time for a change. Can you have it ready when I return? Absolutely, sir. Afterward, he made his next stop at the woodcrafter's workshop. However, the mare wasn't as chipper and gleeful compared to when they had first met. Something had troubled her, and Humbug was determined to figure out why. Excuse me, miss. Is something the matter? Oh, good morning, Mr. Humbuck. Just business as usual. Or a lack thereof, actually. Uh, maybe it is time I give this silly dream hop. At this rate, I'll never be able to make a living of my crafts. Oh, I hear their rock farmers are always looking for up and ups. Maybe I'll just have to... I'm going to have to stop you right there, because what you're saying is utter nonsense. What other options do I have? A pony with your talent has no business taking on the life of a rock farmer. I can see the instruments you build are true works of art, and any pony would be a fool not to see that. Now, the reason your business isn't doing so well has nothing to do with the quality of your work, and I know exactly what your issue is. In fact, I'm going to fix it right this instant. Really? How are you going to do that? Just watch. Humbug left, and after a little bit of time, he returned with a number of ponies who were all intrigued by what he had told them. The mayor was astonished to see so many new potential customers, and at the same time, nervous and restless. She demonstrated her crafts by showing off the intricate designs in the wood, and played a soothing tune that pleased their ears. Just then, they all wanted to place orders for instruments of their very own, and it was enough to bring tears to her eyes. Her dream was brought back to life in an instant, and she needed to know just how Humbug managed to do it in such a short amount of time. I, I, I just don't get it. How'd you do it? You see, you've been missing one crucial element in your business. Advertisement! Without any signs or messages to make yourself stand out, how is any pony supposed to gain an interest in your services? So, I scouted a little for some ponies with interest in music. Didn't take much convincing to pique their interest. I can't believe it! All along it was just that simple! Thank you, Mr. Humbuck! You just saved my business! And we're not through just yet. I need you to promise me that you'll take a portion of your earnings today and get yourself some signs. Uh, give this workshop of yours a total makeover. Uh, if you're in need of assistance, I'd be more than happy to lend a hoof. I promise. Thanks again. Mr. Humbug said his farewells and left the mare with her eager crowd of customers. Finally, he had reached the pony post office. He waltzed in with a scroll in his mouth and handed it to the familiar mare at the front desk. Miss Derpy, a pleasure to see you again. Same to you, Mr. Humbuck. I have a very important letter to mail out. A scroll, in fact. Can you guarantee it'll get to its destination as soon as possible? Right away, sir. Oh, and uh, one more thing. 
Is it too late to buy and send a heartwarming card? Of course not. It's never too late to send some ponies some season's greetings. Unless it's wrap-up time, of course. <laughs> ha! Yes, quite. Uh, then I'd like three, please. You betcha. Would you like the reindeer, the snowmare, or how about the one with the heartwarming tree? Oh, they're all wonderful, so it's difficult to choose just one. Hmm. I say we go with one of each. Great idea! One of each it is! Humbuck knew exactly who he wanted to send them to. One would go to his father, and another to his mother. Ever since he left home, he had never considered the thought of sending a heartwarming card, as he saw it as a waste of bits. But from out of nowhere, he suddenly yearned to get back into contact with the family he cut himself off from, and he felt a heartwarming card would be the best way to start. As for the third card, he had a special plan for that one. There was just a little bit more work to be done. The next day, Sweetie Belle and Scootaloo woke up to a surprise at their front doors. Scootaloo awoke to a box wrapped up in colorful paper and tied with a bow. After she tore it apart, she found an army of toy soldiers inside. The very ones that had captivated her back at the toy store. Filled with glee, she wound up several of them and let them run loose in the house. Sweetie Belle woke up to a knock at her door, where she was greeted by Pinky in a scarf and beanie who held a tray of steaming cocoa. Hey, Sweetie Belle! Special delivery from Mr. Humbuck! <gasps> no way! Scootaloo and Sweetie Belle rushed to Apple Bloom's farmhouse, where they were incredibly eager to inform Apple Bloom of the news. They gathered in the dining room, where they excitedly shared their experiences. Amongst the commotion, Applejack stepped in with a wrapped gift and set it in the center of the dinner table. Hey, y'all. Some pony left this here gift on our doorstep. Looks like it's got your name on it, Sugar Cube. Hurriedly, Apple Bloom ripped it open and was astounded to find an adorable stuffed Ursa. She recognized it the moment she set her eyes upon it and realized that it was the exact same doll she had picked out from the toy store. She bonded with it instantly as she gave it a tight squeeze and rubbed her cheek against its fuzzy belly. Hey, Apple Bloom, what's at the bottom of the box? It's a card! Read it! What's it say? It says, Dear Apple Bloom, Sweetie Belle, and Scootaloo, I am forever well, grateful for the, the impact you three have had on my life. life. Being, Being a, a grumpy, disgruntled, disgruntled old stallion is not how I want to live out the rest of my days, and I am looking forward to a bright future where I can be some pony different. Once again, thank you for everything you've done and for not giving up on me. This has been the most incredible heartwarming I've had in years, and I'm looking forward to many, many more. Also, you'll be the first ones to know that I've received a response from the Cantalot Choir, and they have been very understanding of the whole situation. In fact, they've gone ahead and rescheduled for a surprise visit tomorrow afternoon. So please, help me spread the word. I hope you're just as excited as I am, and I can't wait to see you there. Your friend now and forever, Mr. Humble Buckington. Looks like we did it, girls. Cutie Mark Reciters forever! <laughs> The end.